Hey guys, welcome back to another video. But hey, you say, isn't Zori No S16 quite old by now? I would say you are wrong because this is Zorin OS 16 Lite. It has just been released. This is for your old computer, the one that you're planning on to sell. Well, hold on to it because this video is going to tell you how to revive your old computer with Zorin OS 16 Lite. At least that is what it is advertised for. So let's dive right in and start the tour. So people who are coming from Windows, let's say you run Windows XP or 7 or Vista on your old PC and you want to have something that is modern and doesn't need hundreds of gigabytes of RAM to run. So this is where you're at. So the start menu is the first thing that will come to your path when you're using Zorin OS. So this will be very familiar to Windows users is all that I want to say and we will get back to the start menu later. But for now, that is the glimpse. Moving on to the next, we have our Zorin appearance. The Zorin appearance is one of the most important things or aspects of Zorin OS 16 Lite because this is how it differentiates itself from other competitors in the market by advertising itself as a replacement for Windows users. So we have two layouts and if we want more layouts, we are going to have to buy the Zorin OS Pro Lite version which, I mean, if I had money, that version would have been the one you would have been seeing. So, well, you can take an educated guess. So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and change our layouts. Now, this one is reminiscent of XP days because in XP, these little tabs specifying the name of the application along with whatever application you were running. So... I'm not going to keep it at that. I like the default look better. So we're just going to go and stick with it. Under here, we have themes. So we can change our accent colors. We can make it orange. We can make it gray. And one of the most subtle yet beautiful things that you will notice about Zorin OS is that once you change the accent color, there is a slight hue to the white, which also changes. And not only that, even the icons change. So if I open File Manager, oh man, does that look pretty. You can see these icons, they have changed. So as a proof, I'm going to go to green and we're going to open it up again. So File Manager and these are green. I think I'm going to leave it at green. This is one of my favorite colors. So that's that and let's move on. Under Other, we have applications so we can choose the themes for our applications this is basically an xfce environment so by the way before we proceed further into the video zorin os lite uses xfce which is a very light de and yet has some modern aspects to it and by the way the zorin os team has done a fantastic job in making xfce look this pretty as we are going to see down the line and this is an absolutely amazing experience. So under icons, we can have high color or high contrast under window manager. Wow, you also, you have so many of these options. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and mess with these. I'm just gonna keep it at the default one and we're going to move on. And by the way, you can also have dark mode, which IMO looks very pretty. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to stick with the light mode and we're going to move on. So under desktop, we can have icons enabled or disabled. You can show your home, you can show your trash, and you can also show your file system and mounted volumes. I'm going to get rid of it because I usually don't do it. And it somehow didn't move these up. Can I move these up? Okay, okay. That would have been awkward. So let's go to fonts and we have our regular fonts in here. We can mess with them. We can change whatever we want to, but we're just going to let them be and we're going to move on. So next we have speed, maybe limited in a virtual machine. Ding, ding. I am running inside of a virtual machine because it's my primary OS. I mean, primary computer. So sorry for that. I know some of you are sensitive. I am too, but I'm, but I'm out of options right now. Next. 
software. So we're going to go ahead and launch software and see what has changed, what has improved. Let's go shopping. And before I open up software, I have a few things to say. So according to their website, and I'm coding the Zorin OS team, the software store in Zorin OS 16 Lite now comes preloaded with the app catalog of Flathub in addition to the Snap Store and the Ubuntu and Zorin OS app repositories. Now, if this line made sense to you, excellent. But if it didn't, let me break it down. So Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu 20.04. That is an LTS version, so it's long-term supported, basically supported for a long time. And so Zorin OS will be supported for a long time as well because it is based off of that. And you also have flat packs and flat hub enabled out of the box. So that means when you go to your software center, you're going to see the flat packs as well. Now, the advantage to flat packs, you ask? Basically, the version number is not tied down to the distribution number because by now Ubuntu 20.04 is a little old and the software for Ubuntu is a little old. So if you need video editor, like let's say Kid and Live, and you absolutely need the latest software, Flatpak is the way. Some people also use Snaps. It's not the favorite in this community. So yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about that right now. As you can see, we are getting Flatpak metadata for Zorin OS. I'm going to let it finish and I'll see you soon enough. Okay, so now that we are in the software center, let's go ahead and take a look. As you can see, it looks very pretty, very collected and cool. So on top, as usual, we have our editor's picks. Below that, recent releases, recommended productivity applications, audio and video applications. And below that, we have our categories. So basically, you will have everything that you want from here. And as I already mentioned, if you search for flat packs, you can definitely find flat packs. Let's go ahead and look up Kden Live. And let's see how the interface looks with flat packs and the default, you know, like the Debian package because it's based on Ubuntu. So I'm going to click on the first option and let's see what it gives. So as you can see, it says flat hub. So, and you can also change it to your Debian package. So this is, this would be the Zorin OS package, but we're going to stick to Flathub. And if we install this, we are going to get the latest version, which is 21.08.3. So now that we're done with that, let's get out of that. Let's click on installed. And as you might have guessed, this is your list of applications that are installed under updates. You have your updates. It is up to date, as you can see. And with that, we come to the end of the software center. I'm going to close it and let's move on. So now that we're done with the initial tour, let's go ahead and open the terminal. So now that we're inside the terminal, we're going to install HTOP and NeoFetch. And if they're already installed, then this command will just tell us that. So hit enter, type in your password, and well, there you go. Now, while we wait for that to work, let's quickly go to the start menu and see what we have. So under accessories, we have your archive manager, your calculator, catfish file search, which is very, very handy. So Redshift is very important because if you are a coder and if you stay up at nights, turning the screen a little bit yellow helps a lot. I mean, personally, it does. You also have an app to burn your DVDs if you are, if you still have DVDs, which is very cool. You also have some default games. If you like Mahjong Mines, you're good to go. I mean, if you are a hardcore gamer, you would obviously download Steam and Lutris and play all that kind of things. Under graphics, we have document scanner, document viewer, GIMP, which is fantastic, LibreOffice Draw, Ristretto image viewer. Under multimedia, we have cheese, so for taking photos and videos, Perl Media Player, Pitivy for editing. However, if you are in Linux and if you want a free and open source editor, I would recommend Kid and Live. It's it's really good. You have Rhythmbox, which is trusty old friend, Rhythmbox, Sound Recorder, and I mean, we have some applications in overlap, but that's okay. Under Office, you have your LibreOffice, so 
let's go ahead and check the default version because I mean not everybody knows how to switch between snaps and flat packs and Debian versions and sometimes the thing that comes out of the box is important. So we are going to click help and about LibreOffice and 7.2.3.2. So this is actually very, very recent. Well, good for you. I wasn't expecting this, honestly, but it's very recent. It's not going to hold you back. All right. So let's check if our applications have been installed. And yes, they have been. So let's go to HTOP and see our status. Okay. So after I have used the system for a little while, it basically gives me 1.24 gigs of RAM usage, which is, well, it's not the lightest I have seen, but then if you were to check HTOP on a fresh boot, this would have been much lower, but this is the kind of numbers you would get if you were to normally use your computer and then check your RAM usage. So as you can clearly see, XFCE is not the lightest, at least in this implementation, it isn't. So if you are really strained for RAM and if you have a very old computer, I would recommend you to go with something like Antix. But if you have four gigs of RAM or five gigs or six gigs of RAM, and if you have a fairly not too old, but not too modern processor, you can easily go for it because as you can see, CPU usage is really negligible. All right, so let's get out of that. And oops, I closed the terminal. So we're going to open it up again and NeoFetch. Okay, so let's see what NeoFetch tells us. Beautiful Z logo, by the way, love it. And we are running the 5.11 kernel. So this isn't the newest kernel there is, but then 5.11 is a healthy balance between very new and very old and also being stable. So if you are someone who knows how to change kernel, go for it. But if you don't really know what it is, then this is not going to be a problem for you. And also, if you are someone who has an Intel iGPU or an AMD GPU, 5.11 kernel is fairly recent and you will be able to game pretty okay with this. And over time, as you get more and more accustomed to Linux, you could learn how to change kernels. You could upgrade to a newer kernel. You're off to the races. So let's get out of that and let's continue on with our tour. So according to the website we have a new sound recorder app that's cool so as far as i remember this is this looks very similar to the gnome app so let's see and yeah this is the 3.38 version of the gnome desktop environment so this is nothing new but it's really good that they included it in here by default and it's really going to get the job done Okay, so now that we're done with that, let's go once again back into the file manager and I just want to look at it and appreciate its beauty. So let's see if I can stretch it out. Yep. All right, so very pretty. We have the icons for this. And remember, guys, some of you watching this video, icon colors, it means nothing to you. But for the people that this distribution is targeted for, this is pretty important. I mean, I remember back in the day, I switched from XP to Windows 7 because of the Aero Glass and because of how cool it looked. So, well, good user experience always has its place. So this is basically it. And this is using Thunar because we are in XFCE. And by the way, this is 4.16.8. And I just love the way that they made this XFCE environment because it looks very similar to the GNOME version of Zorin OS. And I am really, really stoked to experience this desktop with you guys. And this is the famous panel. And if we have to talk about the bottom panel, I mean, it looks pretty, right? You have your pinned apps on the left, you have your icons on the right. Let's look at the time and date. And Ooh, well, I would have loved if this would have been a little bit bigger, but that's okay. It works. It's functional. And this is your power manager. So you have presentation mode, which you can turn on and inside settings, you could change more of the power manager things. And 
and that's about it. Now let's go to settings. So if you are someone who is familiar with XFCE, you already know the settings that are going to be in here. But for those of you who don't, let's just quickly go over it because this video is already long. So you have about me, you have appearance where you can change how your desktop is going to look. You can change the colors, you can change your icons, you can change your fonts and settings. Basically, you can change your entire appearance from here, but if you don't want to, you also have Zorin appearance, which, well, kudos to the team. It is fantastic. You also have your desktop settings, so you can change your background color. Let's go with, let's go with this. Or maybe not. Let's go with this. Okay, uh, no offense to the leaf. I think this looks better in my on my desktop. So you also have your options to change menus, your icons, you can change them. You can also have a file system included. You could tweak around with these settings and you could look for it. You also have your window manager, your XFCE terminal settings. You can install additional drivers. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can do a lot of things. Basically, whatever you need to do, it is available. And so with that, we come to the end of this video. I hope you guys really loved it. I had a ton of fun making it and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.